So we're going to talk about playing PlayStation 2 games on the PlayStation 3. So you can see here I've got an example, a very random example people might say. Why have you got GT Concepts Tokyo Geneva 2002, Dave? Why are we choosing to demonstrate this game? Well, because this is a game that back when it came out in about 2002, I picked it up from a game shop, from an independent game shop back then, and then proceeded to play it once and then put it away, never to be played again. And recently I decided to play it and see what it was really like on my 60 gigabyte backwards compatible PS3 that you can see behind us here to see how good the game was. And in actual fact, I found myself really enjoying it because the format is different to your typical Gran Turismo game. Anybody that's played this will know what I mean. Maybe one day I might do some videos on the Gran Turismo games, especially the older ones, to kind of give my feelings and thoughts on them because it can be quite interesting. But previously, if you wanted to play a PlayStation 2 game on a PS3 console, it had to be a backwards compatible model like this one here. This is the European, so the UK, CECHC03 model, the 60 gigabyte model that can play PS2 games. But of course, it can only play PS2 games that are in the PAL region, so they have to be PAL region games. If I offer that a North American NTSC or Japanese NTSC J game, it's going to tell me it can't play it. But the interesting thing is, and something that I learned fairly recently, is there's actually more than one type of backwards compatible PlayStation 3. So essentially what we've got here is the European version that is actually not a full backwards compatible PS3. If you went back to the 2006 North American and Japanese launch of the PS3 and picked up their 60 gigabyte model, it would have had all the PS2 chipset hardware essentially in there. So the CPU and the GPU that makes playing the PS2 games possible. And the compatibility would have been pretty much 100% or as close to 100% as possible. And the games would have worked as expected. By the time this model came out over here in Europe in March of 2007, Sony actually took out the PS2 CPU as a bit of a cost cutting exercise, I'd imagine, because it's no secret these things were extremely expensive to manufacture, especially in the early days. So they took out the PS2 CPU and all the functions that the PS2 CPU carries out have actually been emulated on the PlayStation 3 CPU. So you're going to have maybe a slight variation or maybe more than a slight variation in terms of how things work because you're running it in software emulation rather than the physical chip that it was originally working off of. So the compatibility will take a bit of a hit and I will mention during this video and show you that there are a couple of problems that I've come across when playing PS2 games on the PS3. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is you're going to see this PS3 in action. I'm going to talk about other PS3s as well because things have changed a little bit as I'll come on to and also as a little bit of a bonus at the end we'll see how that game plays running on a decent gaming PC running a PS2 emulator which is PC SX2. So as you can see this footage we're running on the backwards compatible PS3 as you can see in the top left corner. This is Gran Turismo Concept Tokyo Geneva as I mentioned at the beginning of the video and the same save data is being used across all devices so whether that be the consoles or the PC when it comes to the PC SX2 footage. So you can see things seem to be working quite nicely. Graphics look good in the menus here. It's performing pretty much exactly as I would expect. So, so far so good for this particular game. It seems to be running quite well on the BC PS3. We're now at the intro sequence. So we'll just let that run for a moment or two. And then we're gonna go and start the race. So again, you get this little intro with the music that plays. This all seems pretty good and graphics look nice and it seems to be performing okay. And it's go, go, go. <laughs> My attempt at some awful commentary there. So yeah, it started, the footage has started, the game is running and it looks pretty good, I have to say, on the backwards compatible PS3. Things seem to look pretty decent, it seems to be performing quite well. Yeah, it looks good, this game is running quite nicely. But as I'll explain later on, not all games do run quite nicely. Excuse my driving where I'm crashing into the back of the Viper, this isn't representative of how I drive in real life, of course not. Now when we get to the timing beam here, we magically switch over to the PS2 through the power of video editing. So this is the same game of course, same save data, running on the original PlayStation 2 fat model, running through a component cable and being upscaled via the XRGB FrameMeister so that I can capture the footage for you guys. So again through the menus things are looking pretty good as you'd expect them to because they're running on the PS2. 
and we're at the rate start screen as we were before. So again, just watch this little short bit of the intro sequence and then we'll start the race. Okay, this time, no dodgy commentary from me, we'll just let this one roll. So you can see, the race has started, things look pretty good, it's performing quite nicely, and it shows you that the backwards compatible PS3 seems to do a pretty good job, as it runs quite well. This, uh, this looks really decent, I have to say, a PS2 game being upscaled, running through component looks decent, I really like it. It performs nicely, I had a lot of fun playing this, as well as playing bumper cars with the AI, although that's not too difficult on Gran Turismo. We're going to swap back over to the backwards compatible PS3 now at the timing beam, as you can see from the top left corner of the screen. So we're going to run another little section of this track on the backwards compatible PS3, and then we're going to switch back to the PS2 and run the exact same section of track so you can see how things look. Things look pretty decent, I have to say. It looks rather nice. So there we go, back to the PS2 footage once again. And you can see things are looking really, really nice. Backwards compatible PS3 definitely does a good job of running this game, which I think is really awesome. Now, when we hit the timing beam again, this time on the PS2 footage, we're gonna go side by side. Half the screen's gonna be split in half and we're gonna have a side by side of the backwards compatible PS3 on the left and the original PS2 console on the right and you're gonna see how things look side by side directly with each other, and there you go. Contrast is slightly different on the backwards compatible PS3. The brightness also appears to be a little bit different, but I've done no trickery with video editing. This is how both games look when I run them on those particular consoles. So it looks pretty good. As you can see, things seem to be performing quite nicely. I think if I'm being nitpicky, there's a little slight touch of slowdown on the PS on the backwards compatible PS3. It doesn't run quite as smoothly as it does on the PS2, but it looks good. It really does, and it plays, you almost can't tell the difference. It plays really nicely on the PS3.
but not all PS2 games work as expected on the backwards compatible PlayStation 3. I've mentioned this one before when I did emulation versus real hardware, a video, another video on my channel, so check that one out. This is Tekken Tag Tournament, which is an early PS2 game, as you can see running on the backwards compatible PS3. And already, from this little intro sequence of the characters, you can see there's a bit of a problem. The game is running in slow motion, it's not running correctly, so there's obviously something with the CPU emulation that the backwards compatible PS3 is doing that isn't quite right because this game is not running correctly at all. So now, PS2. So the game runs exactly as you'd expect because it's running on a PS2. And you're gonna see what I mean when the fight starts. The speed is completely different. But the thing is, there are games that don't even work at all on a backwards compatible PS3. I've got one example, which is Outrun 2006, Coast to Coast. The game actually crashes during the car selection screen. So you don't even get to play the game at all. You can see how much quicker this is running. This is running at normal speed on the PS2, exactly as it should be running. So yeah, kind of shows you really that the backwards compatible PS3 does have some compatibility issues anyway. There is also a setting, as I'm going to show you in a moment, on the PlayStation 3's menu for upscaling settings. I had thought of maybe trying to turn that off and see if that makes a difference. Maybe there's some kind of setting that the emulation is running that's slowing things down. And here you can see that particular option I was talking about, the PS slash PS2 upscaling option. Turning that to off appears to make absolutely no difference, unfortunately, with Tekken Tag Tournament. And as you'll see, when I play Tekken Tag Tournament again, we have exactly the same issue. So here we are with all those lovely settings turned off. And I'm going to do exactly the same again. I think I've even lowered the output resolution from the PS3 as well to the 576p mode because I thought maybe that might be having some effect on the way the game's playing. But again, as you can see, everything is running slowly. It's not running at full speed. So we've got still got exactly the same issue. There's something going on with the PS2 emulation side of things, so the CPU emulation, essentially, that's causing Tekken Tag Tournament to run slowly. Nowadays, though, things have changed a little bit, or I say nowadays, things have changed ever since PS3s like this PS3 Slim here have been able to be hacked or use custom firmware on them. This particular PS3 is capable of playing PS2 games. As long as I load the PS2 game as an ISO file onto the hard disk, the internal hard disk of that PS3, I can then play it using a file manager. So that's exactly what I do with this PS3 to play some of the PS2 games. Now with this one, it is 100% emulation of both the CPU and the GPU of the PS2. None of the hardware is inside that console, as was the case further on as well. There's also some fat models that preceded this that came after the 60 gigabyte model that don't have the PS2 hardware in them either. So essentially, again, they would all be using software emulation, but with a custom firmware, you can actually get around the restriction of playing the games because if you try to load a PS2 disc in this, as it is, at the moment, it will tell you it can't do it or it will just crash. But if you load it as an ISO and use one of the loaders and use the Cobra firmware emulator, so the BD-ROM Blu-ray disc emulator, you can actually play PS2 games that way. But this PS3, as the other PS3 Slims, including the Super Slim, will run them 
as emulation. Yes, even the later slims and super slims can actually be hacked in some way, shape or form using a hen or a homebrew enabler. And there's various ways of converting PS2 games across to those PS3 so that you can play them on that console. So we're going to look at GT Concept 2002 running on this. And as you're going to see, things don't perform quite the same and don't look quite the same as they did on the partial backwards compatible PS3 that I just showed you. So let's take a look and we'll have some side by side footage of this PS3 and the backwards compatible PS3 running the game. Okay, so now the slim PS3, as indicated by the title card in the top left corner there. You can see we're running the same game, same save data on the slim PS3. Running the game off of the hard disk because that with the hacked slash custom firmware console is how you have to run PS2 games. You also need to have a Cobra firmware installed as part of that custom firmware, which I do, which enables you to run PS2 games. You noticed on the menu screens there, the graphics were sort of jumping up and down, bobbing up and down a little bit, which it wasn't doing on the backwards compatible PS3. So, same scenario again, same race, same track, same car. And we're gonna let this one run. And things seem reasonably okay, but actually during my testing of this game, in particular on the Tokyo R246 track, there was a lot of slowdown on this slim PS3 trying to run this PS2 game, GT Concept 2002. The experience was not as good as the backwards compatible PS3. So that is something that you're going to find, because with the slim PS3 and other variants that don't have any PS2 hardware in them at all, it's all reliant on software emulation, you might find that things won't work exactly as expected. There may be simple things like a bit of slowdown, a bit of, a bit of a timing issue maybe with the way the game plays, or you might notice something more severe, like a, a glitch, graphical glitches, sound glitches, or the absolute worst case scenario, as you heard me say about OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast, the game just won't launch at all or will crash when you're even attempting to set up the game. So you can see here we're running this on the slim PS3. Again, graphically it looks okay. I did notice it didn't look quite as good as the backwards compatible PS3. And what's going to happen when we next get to the next timing beam is we're going to have a lovely split screen. This time we're going to have the slim PlayStation 3 on the left and the backwards compatible PlayStation 3 on the right. So you can see the difference of performance. I mean at the moment, because I'm ahead of all the other cars, the difference might not be as noticeable as it was if I was still in amongst the pack as it were with other cars around me. But I can still see occasionally on the approach to corners where there's a lot of things in, in, the, in the scenery, in the background, but the game does slow down a bit. It does seem to drop some frames along the way. So we're gonna come past these trees and hit the timing beam. And for the magic of editing, We've now got the slim PS3 on the right and the backwards compatible PS3 on the left. So actually the opposite of what I said a moment ago, the greatness of video editing. Uh, and as you can see, yeah, you might be able to see a performance difference that the backwards compatible PS3 seems to be running the game a little bit smoother in comparison to the slim PS3. But, you know, generally the slim PS3, it's acceptable. It runs reasonably well. For most people, it's gonna be absolutely fine. And to be honest, I would recommend getting one of the later model PS3s because I might as well say it now and be completely frank and completely honest with you guys. The backwards compatible PS3s, the original fat model PS3s are horrendously unreliable and I would not recommend you picking one of those up. You may have heard of things like Wylod or Yellow Light of Death. All of those fat PS3s suffer with it and they suffer with it quite a lot and quite badly. And really, especially for the fact they've gone up in value because they're harder to get hold of these days, I wouldn't say it's worth it because you might you might be fine it might last years maybe if you don't play on it too much or you might be unlucky and it might last a few days but these things do die i've had a 60 gig ps3 my original launch day console from back in 2007 it actually died on me i think in about 2010 and then i bought a ps3 slim 
I then also picked up and managed to get hold of two backwards compatible PS3s. One of them works really nicely and I've completely left it untouched. I've not opened it. The warranty seal is still on it. The other one that you saw me showing you in the video footage earlier on, the fan kicks up within minutes of switching the console on to its loudest point because essentially I need to do some maintenance underneath the heat spreader that sits on top of the chip. But that's quite a dangerous thing to do. So here you go. The race is finished on both consoles and hopefully you'll see a little bit of a difference when it comes to the graphics. Things just look that little bit sharper, that little bit clearer on the backwards compatible PS3 in comparison to the slim PS3. So this is PCSX2, a Sony PlayStation 2 emulator for the PC running GT Concept 2002. Again, the save data has been transferred across using Action Replay Max and a USB stick and then converting it so that I can use it in PCSX2. The settings for this, the graphics settings are running at three times native. You can also go higher than that if you've got the hardware that can cope with it because you're going to need a decent PC in order to run PCSX2 and running PS2 games on it. So this looks really, really nice. I have to say when I was reviewing this footage after capturing it, it looks really, really nice. And I've seen people on YouTube upload some really, really nice looking footage from PCSX2 of games like Gran Turismo 4 and things look pretty impressive, it has to be said. And the game still holds up well, graphically anyway. So, here we go. We're off the line, things are running nice and smoothly. It runs really, really well. I do, of course, get input lag because I'm running emulation with a Bluetooth controller using my PC. So there is a little bit of input lag, which will affect how I drive a little bit in this game. See, typical racing driver getting his excuses in. <laughs> But yeah, it looks great, guys. You can make PS2 games look really, really nice with PCSX2. It's quite impressive, to be honest. So if you have got a pretty decent PC, then definitely give PCSX2 a look if you want to play some PS2 games, because generally the results can be quite nice. Things can look really decent. You will have to tweak settings to get all games or most games to run nicely and smoothly. And there are some emulation settings within PCSX2 that even I don't understand. I don't know what they do, so I generally leave them at the default levels. So, again, shortly we're going to have this running against the PS2 footage, so you can see how it performs in comparison to a real PS2. But yes, I'm really imp impressed with how this looks. Graphically, it looks great. So we've hit the timing beam, and as you can see, on the left, PS2, on the right, PC SX2, the emulator on the PC of PlayStation 2. Things look pretty good. Again, there might be a slight sort of contrast difference. It's not me messing about with the video footage. That's how it came across, how it was captured. And as you can see, the PC footage is running really nicely, but it also shows you how good the PS2 actually does look. I know not all PS2 games look this good, but this game looks decent and holds up really well today and emulated on the PC, it looks nice. And you can see the PC, my particular PC, is handling things really nicely. 
It's running the game nicely, it's emulating it well, the frame rate is decent. It's really, really impressive. And it just shows you just how good PS2 games still are, even in 2018 by the time I'm recording this video. I'm still a huge fan of the PS2 and I still like to go back and play the games. And it's why it's awesome that Sony initially had backwards compatibility in the early PS3 models. It's a shame that these days with the PS4, we don't have backwards compatibility in the traditional sense of being able to offer up a PlayStation 2 game to a PS4 and play it. I'm quite disappointed in that. Sony have used a money-making idea of actually selling some games, running them via emulation on the PS4, and then selling them as PS2 classics on the PlayStation Store. Yeah, I get they've got to make money, but there are still a lot of people out there like myself that have got a collection of PS2 and PS1 games that would love to still play them on the PS4. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed my look at playing PS2 games on the PS3 and also on PCSX2 emulator.